Okay, let's finish up our translation lecture. Um, we left off here with a clicker. Um, so remember when you're translating, you're going to go from AUG to your stop codon. Okay, and no further. Stop means stop. So go ahead, pause the video, use this like a clicker. Which amino acid will be added to the polypeptide chain next? And so what you want to be reading is the mRNA codon and Leucine was already added with that tRNA, so the next amino acid would have the codon GCG. And if you look, that is alanine. Okay, here's another one. Go ahead and pause it and figure out if an amino acid, an amino acid, if an mRNA has the repeating sequence CUA. So that means it's going five prime, CUA. CUA, CUA. What amino acid does this mRNA code for if the reading frame is not overlapping? So that means you're keeping your three reading frames. And if you look that up, the answer is leucine. Now, what if the reading frame was CUA? I mean, <laughs> what if the reading frame was overlapping? So you can pause and figure it out. I'm going to go through it. We've talked about there's always three open reading frames per transcript, potentially. So we know that CUA encodes for leucine. The next reading frame overlapping reading frame would be this group of three. So we call this reading frame two, and so the codon would be UAC. UAC codes for tyrosine. The third, oh, oops. The third overlapping reading frame, let's get rid of these. would be starting with the one, two, third letter, and that would be ACU. And if you looked that one up, ACU codes for threonine. So the answer is A. So if you read the beginning of the textbook, it talks about how the codon table was figured out, and basically they used these different repeating um, sequences of nucleotides to figure out which codons um, corresponded to which amino acids. Alright, we looked at this image um, in class. A polysome just means many ribosomes. So in fact one mRNA can have multiple ribosomes translating at the same time. So you can have multiple proteins being expressed. And one of the things that controls how, how much protein um, is remember, how much protein is made, I should complete my sentences. Remember you've got the poly A binding protein and the initiation factors at the cap. And even though this poly A tail is protected, it also can be degraded. And so when, excuse me, the poly A tail gets too small, it can't help stabilize the whole initiation factor um, complex and translation stops. A couple other things that are pretty interesting. Um, so we talked about Yes, RNA polymerase has a little bit of proofreading. It has a higher um, 
error rate than DNA polymerase. And that's okay because um, it's a temporary molecule. So what do our cells do if there is a bad mRNA? Because you don't want to be spending um, energy translating a protein um, that's incorrect. Something we didn't quite get to at the end of our transcription talk is these EJCs, exon junction complex. So these are put on as splicing happens. So we have our spliceosome come in, splice together um, the exons, and then this exon junction complex is put on. And this is kind of a signal to the cell that this mRNA is good. But it doesn't make a signal until you get a ribosome stuck. Okay. So here's your normal transcript. The exon junctions are um, sorry, exon junction complexes are displaced as the ribosome comes on. So it just knocks them off. Ribosome goes all the way, stop codon, disassembles. This is now a good mRNA because um, all the exon junction complexes were removed, and so the cell reads this as, okay, this is a good mRNA. If you have a premature stop codon, which means you have a stop codon where it really shouldn't be, so this is the wild type stop codon, but due to a mutation, which we'll talk about in chapter 18, you have a premature stop codon, which means that the ribosome comes in and stops translating early. It hasn't knocked off this last exon junction complex. When that happens, when there's an exon junction complex stuck on the mRNA, we have something called nonsense mediated MR decay, mRNA decay. Nonsense always stands for stop codon, and we will again talk about this with chapter 18. So what happens is you actually end up with a whole bunch of proteins that come on and make sure there's no more ribosomes coming on and they actually degrade the mRNA. So these proteins recognize that ribosomes are leaving before knocking off the last exon junction complex proteins come on, degrade or decay the mRNA so that it's no longer being used to make a protein. Okay. So that's when you have a premature and early stop codon. Non-stop mRNA decay is when you're missing a stop codon. Okay. So you can't stop, it's non-stop. The ribosome is then stuck at the poly A tail because remember, the stop codon triggers release of the um, ribosome. And so if there's no stop codon, the ribosome can't be released. So the ribosome is stuck on the mRNA and again, basically a series of proteins come on, release the ribosome, destroy the mRNA so that it's no longer used for um, translation. Okay. Non-stop, you don't have a stop code on. The final type of decay is no-go decay. And it's not really shown that great here, but what is stalling the ribosome? is secondary structure. So for some reason, the mRNA is folding up. So it might be folding into a hairpin or a series of stem loops, something like this. Um, and the ribosome can't get past it. So no go. Ribosome can't continue um, translating and the same result as um, 
with all of these types of mRNA decay, additional pepti um, sorry, uh, additional proteins come on, and you do not need to know the details of any of these. Proteins come on, destroy the mRNA, release the ribosomes. Okay. Um, there's been some research um, about what actually happens after these ribosomes are released. I'm just showing you this as one of the current models for how no-go decay works. But what you need to know is the ribosome is stalled due to secondary structure. Proteins come in, release the ribosome, chew up the mRNA. It's the common theme for all of the mRNA decays. The difference is what causes that RNA molecule to um, not be properly translated. So again, ribosome, which is ribosomal RNA and protein. Okay, the ribosome reads the mRNA. The tRNA is the translator, right, that goes between the mRNA and the protein languages. There's the EPA side, so you want to understand how elongation works. And ribosomes are made of a small and large subunit. OK, that takes us through translation. Um, the next video you will have is on chapter 18, DNA damage and DNA mutations.